Now, we will see if the observation made by Joseph's group is correct. Joseph, can you repeat your statement? If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Do you know how to prove this statement? I think so. I will just refer to the figure drawn by Sen. In this case, we want to show that angles 3 and 6 are supplementary, and so are angles 4 and 5. We were able to show this using the corresponding angle postulate, but I think it can also be proven using alternate interior angles. Really? Then, would you like to share it with the class? Well, angles 3 and 5 are congruent since they are alternate interior angles. Also, angles 5 and 6 are supplementary, since they form a linear pair. If we substitute angle 3 in place of angle 5, then 3 and 6 are also supplementary. Well done, Joseph! Class, what alternative proofs can you think of? 1 and 6 are congruent corresponding angles, while 1 and 3 are supplementary since they form a linear pair. We can do substitution like Joseph did to show that angles 3 and 6 are also supplementary. Very good, Maurice! Can anyone think of other ways of proving this? I can, but it's similar to what Maurice did. We can use the corresponding angles 3 and 7 and the linear pair formed by angles 6 and 7. Well done, class! We still have one more pair of angles to study, the consecutive exterior angles. Let us refer to our figure. Can you identify the pairs of consecutive exterior angles? I see angles 1 and 7 and also 2 and 8. Based on the figure, how are the angles in these pairs related? 1 and 6 are congruent corresponding angles, while 6 and 7 are supplementary. This means 1 and 7 are also supplementary. We can do the same with angles 2 and 8. Angles 2 and 5 are congruent corresponding angles, while 5 and 8 are supplementary. So angles 2 and 8 are also supplementary. Well done! Let us now summarize all that we have shown today. Can you tell us, Joseph? If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior alternate exterior, and corresponding angles are congruent. Also, consecutive interior and consecutive exterior angles are supplementary. The man on the screen is Eratosthenes, a prominent mathematician of ancient times. Around 220 BC, he devised a way to measure the circumference of the Earth. How could he do that? I'm sure spaceships and computers were not yet invented then. His method was quite remarkable because it was very simple. He made two assumptions. One, that the Earth was round, and two, that the sun rays reaching the Earth are parallel. At places where the sun rays hit directly, like at point A, no shadow will be cast. If the sun's rays hit an object on the surface at an angle, then the object will cast a shadow on the Earth's surface. The shadows get longer the further an object is from A. Then that means that the shadows of objects at point C are very long. Yes, that's right. Erastosthenes observed that on the day of the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, the sun's rays hit the town of Shen directly. How did he know that? He observed that at noon on this day, Sunlight was able to shine deep down a well in Shen and revealing its bottom. He observed that on noon on this day, sunlight was able to shine deep down on a well in Shen revealing its bottom. At the same time, using the shadow cast by a vertical pole in the town of Alexandria, which was about 500 miles, approximate 5,000 stadia, the unit of distance being used at that time from Shen, he found that the sun's rays made an angle of 7.2 degrees with the pole. From this information, Aristothenes was able to obtain a fairly accurate estimate of the Earth's circumference. He was able to do that with just that information? How did he do it? 
By using the same properties, we studied today and some simple ratio and proportion. Line M is formed when the line through the base of the pole is extended to join the Earth's center. Line N represents the sun's ray that strikes the well and meets the center of the Earth. Angle 2 is the angle formed by lines M and N. So that means that lines L and N are parallel since they represent parallel rays of the sun. Line M would be the transversal that intersects lines L and N. Then that means that angles 1 and 2 would be alternate interior angles and hence congruent. So angle 2 would also be 7.2 degrees. Yes, you are correct. But Miss Michelle, I still don't understand how we can find the Earth's diameter this way. We'll get to that. Remember that Aristoteles assumed that the Earth was round. Thus, its cross-section would be a circle. The figure that looks like a slice of a pie is called the sector of a circle. The angle at the center is 360 degrees and the angle of the sector at the center is X. A and S are two points on the circle. C is the circumference and D is the distance between A and S along the circle, which is just the length of the arc from A to S which bounds the sector. If D increases, what do you think happens to the angle X of the sector? This angle increases as well. That's right. In fact, it is known that the ratio of the arc length D to the angle X is constant for a given circle. If X is equal to 360 degrees, what is the value of D? Uh, let's see. 360 degrees is one complete revolution, so that the sector is the whole circle. Then D would be equal to C. Yes, that's true. Now, can anyone identify the ratios that are equal? Mm, I'll try. Miss Michelle said that the ratio of the length of an arc bounding a sector to the measure of central angle formed by the sector is constant. Then the ratio of D to X is equal to the ratio of C to 360. What equivalent proportions can we get from this? The ratio of the numerators is equal to the ratio of the denominators. I'm glad you remembered. Now, to use this in our problem, let A be Alexandria and S, Shin. Let D be the distance between these two places. What is the value of D? I think it is 500 miles. Yes, that is correct. Now, to apply what we learned earlier, why is X 7.2 degrees? There is another angle with the same measure. The two angles are alternate interior angles. Lines L and N represent the sun's rays. So the lines are parallel and the angles are congruent. Very good, Maurice. Now, can anyone show on the board how Aristoteles calculated the Earth's circumference? May I try? Okay, that's up. Go ahead. Very good, Danso. Wow! This Eratosthenes was a real smart guy. So are you and I'm glad. 